Welcome into Tennessee Titans today, again for the second time today, this time with some bad news. I am Tom Downey, and I regret to inform you that there's some major injury news for Tennessee. Star edge rusher Harold Landry tore his ACL during a practice on Wednesday. So before the season even starts for Tennessee, they lose one of their most significant defensive pieces. Landry, who got paid this offseason, is now going to miss the entire 2022 campaign. It should be pretty obvious, but this is horrible news for Tennessee and for Landry. The timeline recovery will make him fine for 2023, but you wanted him out there, there this year. Now you're thin at edge rusher, you're banking Really hard on Bud Dupree and Rashad Weaver. It is a brutal and significant loss here for Tennessee to be without Harold Landry for the 2022 campaign. We'll go more in depth on Landry, plus some replacement options on and off the roster for Tennessee. But let's send some good vibes out there for Harold Landry. Like the video to wish him the best, as difficult as this is a loss for Tennessee. Some more background here on Landry for, from Dov Kleiman. Titans signed the Pastors on an $87.6 million extension with $52.5 million guaranteed this offseason. It's a massive blow to the Titans who had the number one seed in the AFC last year. And a big reason why they were so good defensively is Harold Landry. I don't mean to discount the play of guys like Nico Autry, uh, like my boy Jeffrey Simmons, but Landry had the breakout year we were waiting for and waiting for. 75 tackles or 74 tackles, 14 tackles for loss, 12 sacks, 22 quarterback hits. Landry was the the guy that the Titans thought he was going to when they spent a second round pick on him. He was significantly impactful from that standpoint. He finally had that major breakout year. He had shown the promise in 2019. The pressure rates were still really high in 2020, even if the sack numbers weren't quite the same from that perspective. Then he had the breakout year. I'm thinking he's going to have double digit sacks again. He's going to be a dynamic duo on the outside with Bud Dupree, who should be healthy. And now they're not going to have him at all this year. Here's where things sit at the linebacker room overall, specifically that edge rusher group, right? Harold Landry now out for the year. Bud Dupree. He's been banged up over the years, but should be healthy, I hope. Rashad Weaver, is uh, you're banking on him now being basically a starter for you. Ole Adenai is kind of more of an edge four. Now I think you're worried about the edge three group overall. So it's a dicey situation here for Tennessee in terms of that, that linebacking room. Things are not great at the edge rusher spot. I have hope for Rashad Weaver, but he didn't make a major impact last year. That should make it a little bit troubling from that standpoint. So what do you think? Should the Titans sign another edge rusher? Why for yes and for no? Sound off for me in the comment section at the pinned comment. That's what this question is. So, so if an ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, type in Y for yes or N for no. Now internally, the next man up unquestionably is going to be Rashad. We were fourth round pick out of Pitt. Has talent, has upside, but he had two tackles last year. Is he ready to be a starter? If I think Tennessee was 100% confident in him, you know, maybe they wouldn't have re-signed Harold Landry after paying Bud Dupree a good amount of money. I feel good about Weaver being edge three, even though he's totally unproven. As a starter, I'm a little bit more worried as good as the overall front for Tennessee is. So with that in mind, some linebacker options. And I say linebacker here because... These are free agents, right? Donta Hightower has played both kind of that hybrid flex role inside linebacker, outside linebacker. I think he's more of an inside at this point in his NFL career, but he could give you edge reps if you needed him to. So I'll mention him, plus some Patriots crossover to an extent with some regime members there. Jason Pierre-Paul is a veteran. I am kind of worried he's washed. Uh, there's been very little buzz on interest in JPP so far this offseason. But he is a household name. He really struggled last year, though, for, t for Tampa. Tack McKinley's taken some visits. Dallas was one of those visits. I think he visited the Cardinals as well. Former first-round pick has never put it all together, but could be a decent scheme fit for Tennessee. The name I'd monitor here, among others on the practice squad, is Kamoko Ture. He, former Colt, uh, was on the Niners practice squad right now. And remember the practice squad rules. 
You can sign them. You can poach them off of practice squads. Got to keep them on your active roster for a few weeks. That's fine. I think if to raise your edge three slash edge two with, uh, with Rashad Weaver, it's not ideal, but it does help you get to a slightly better position and standpoint overall in terms of your concern at the edge rusher spot. Now, if you want to be aggressive, which I'm not sure Tennessee wants to be right now, some trade options. Robert Quinn is the big name one, the Chicago Bears edge. I think the Bears might be blowing it up at some point in the near future. Maybe a mid-season trade if Tennessee's a, you know, a, a contender. Quinn's not that expensive for three years, but it's a big cap hit for one year right now. Terrell Basham is a former Colt Jet and now a member of the Dallas Cowboys. They went 11 deep on their defensive line. They could afford to trade Terrell Basham. He's not a great player. He'll give you about five sacks, maybe three sacks more realistically, but he's a veteran proven piece on the outside. Cleland Furl, the Raiders edge, is a bit expensive. I don't love his fit in a pure 3-4 base that Tennessee likes to run so much, even though they do, of course, go four-man front plenty. A bit expensive as well. He's actually my least fit favorite name on this list just because of the money involved. Ben Banigui would be a fun fit. He's an edge rusher from TCU, second-round pick out of for the Indianapolis Colts. Would they trade him in division, though? I'm not so sure on that st standpoint. But if I'm Tennessee... I'm exploring any and all options uh, when it comes to the edge position because that depth is now a major concern. I, Denny I, Weaver, and Bud Dupree doesn't really move the needle for me that much. So I'm cautiously hopeful slash suggesting that Tennessee look at other edge options. Two videos for you guys today, plus more coming this weekend. Make sure you don't miss out on any Titans news or rumors or whatever's going on around your favorite football team. Hit that big red button and subscribe right now. All right, Jeremy Fowler broke this news involving Derrick Henry. Some good news, I think. Tennessee Titans and all-pro back Derrick Henry have agreed to a reworked contract extension that increases pay to $14 million this year, including $9 million in a signing bonus. This is up from $12 million. He's still a free agent in 2024, with the Titans reworking his deal to get more now. So it's a $2 million raise for this year. They added some signing bonus stuff as well to make this work more from a cap perspective. Void years were actually added to his deal. Now, cap-wise, it doesn't really move the needle that much because so much of it was a signing bonus. What this does mean long-term is that even though there were no new years added, an extension is a lot more likely next year. You added some dead money into future years with this extension. I believe this signals a, we're going to pay you a little bit now, Derek, and then assuming you play well next year or this year, we're going to extend you, and you'll be the exception to the general rule of running backs not having great shelf lives in the NFL. Even though he was a bit banged up last year, not the same guy, there are a lot of backs in the NFL that would love 4.3 yards per carry, almost 1,000 yards, and 10 touchdowns. I would like to keep that carry number a little bit lower uh, relative to the other stats that have been done in recent years. 219 is, is fine, but 300 plus is maybe a little bit high for me. But Henry is one of the premier backs in the NFL. The $14 million per year actually keeps him in line with what he's going to make this year. But just on a per-year basis, he's been behind McCaffrey, behind Kamara, behind Zeke. I am very curious if and when that extension gets done, just how much it'll be worth. I mean, we've seen this time and time again. The running back market does not move in the same way that all of the other markets end up moving. So keep that in mind for Derrick Henry. And with that in mind, how much would you pay Henry per year? Let me know in the comments section. Is it $14 million? Is it more? Let me know in the comments section. Now, we mentioned on our other video today, to make room for uh, receiver Josh Gordon, there had to be some practice squad moves. Well, there were actually multiple of them. Tight end Kevin Rader of the Steelers formerly has also been added to the team's practice squad. Reggie Roberson, the receiver, he is cut. And the other tight end, David Wells, has been released as well. So two additions, basically. Josh Gordon at receiver, Kevin Rader at tight end. To make room for those guys, tight end David Wells and wide receiver Reggie Roberson have all been released. So if you missed our Josh Gordon video, check it out. It's on the channel He's been signed to the practice squad. That was the good news today. The bad news is edge rusher Harold Landry out for the year with a torn ACL.